Good afternoon to you. Mark Settle, Hurricane Track here Monday now, the second day of June 2025. Appreciate you tuning in to today's video. Just like that, we have our first area of interest. And guess what? It's not down in the Caribbean or the Gulf. It is an area of interest off the southeast United States. I'll explain about this and more in today's update. Again, thanks for tuning in. Let's get started, shall we? First of all, Let's head over to our interactive tracking map. This is off the Hurricane Track Insider site. Part of the benefits that our patrons, our supporters, have access to. And the great Will Woodgate over in the UK helped to code this up for us. Much appreciated. we got the Pacific system. Medium chance of development with that. I like it that we can see all of this on one map. And then we have our area that just popped up off of the coast of the southeast United States. What's the deal with it? Well, it says offshore of what I just said, southeastern U.S. coast, a non-tropical area of low pressure is forecast to form near or offshore of the southeastern U.S. coast during the next couple of days. If the system remains offshore, the low could gradually develop some subtropical or tropical characteristics later this week while moving northeastward 10 to 15 so forth and so on, 10% chance over the next seven days. What does all of that mean? A lot of terminology there. Basically, it's coming from a non-tropical source of energy. In other words, it's not a tropical wave. It's going to have its origins from something else, a different way to make the cake, so to speak. And at the end of the day, it might be more spread out than a true tropical system. It could be more concentrated. That's the tropical versus subtropical part. But for you at home, just think impact. This could impact my weekend if I've got boating plans and I know it's going to be important with my family and or you have graduation plans. High schools are graduating their seniors this weekend across my neck of the woods over here in southeast North Carolina. So yeah, that could be a problem. Look at the yellow is saying, uh-oh, I need to watch this for a number of reasons. It's not just Oh, where are the big hurricanes? It's about the impacts, and this could bring some impacts. So looking at the National Hurricane Center homepage, and by the way, they do now go all the way out to 180 degrees longitude on the East Pacific map, if you click on that. That's pretty cool, but I do like the fact, just saying, that we can zoom in and zoom out, and there's everything on one nice and tidy map on our site. But here's the same info over there. And we'll see how this turns out over the coming days. Satellite animation, I can show you. There's some of that energy down there. Non-tropical in nature. We had this front come through. The leftover energy draped off the coast of the southeast. Kind of a rainy, showery day there. Certainly cloudy in Bermuda, part of that system over there. And you've even had some hail down here in Tampa. Some pretty intense thunderstorms uh, streaming in off of the very warm and unstable Gulf of Mexico. Well, the, the gulf isn't unstable. The air above it certainly is. Hot and juicy and muggy. And you get that cold air over the top. Bam! You get these intense thunderstorms that, again, drop some hail down there. That, my friends, is the leftovers of the moisture, anyway, from Alvin in an upper-level system. And then we do have a medium chance of something developing down here. Elsewhere, just trade winds and African dust. Saharan air layer, dry air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, and all of that kind of thing coming off the coast of Africa, streaming thousands of miles across through the Caribbean into the Gulf. Yep, going to have no development out here when you see that. It's just almost impossible because you've got warm air over basically warm, muggy air, and that just doesn't work. But again, look at this, that energy streaming here off the eastern part of the Gulf into Florida, and then all the rest of this energy, some of that might coalesce and bundle, and we have something maybe to watch over the coming days. Sea surface temperature anomalies, I always like to take a look at this at least once a week and just kind of see where things are from the anomalies perspective, how much above or below average are we running. And in the East Pack, it's pretty easy to see uh, we don't have an El Nino, and that is so very important. I've said it quite a few times, at least over the last six months, not having an El Nino with a warm Atlantic relative to average is usually a recipe for a busier than average Atlantic. It's just pretty simple. 
just not having the El, the El Nino is a big deal. And in fact, we don't have an El Nino. It's also a little bit cooler than average across some of these areas. So we'll call it neutral to cool neutral, but no signs of El Nino at all. Meanwhile, Gulf well above average, Caribbean well above average. Most of the main development region running warmer than average. This is ridiculous up here, this marine heat wave. Very warm relative to average. I really don't know what this is going to do to the hurricane season. Uh, I haven't seen it that warm that far northeast, sort of by itself. So we'll take a gander at it on some of our chats that we have with our uh, colleagues and see what that might mean. But basically, nothing has changed. No reason to think we won't have a busy season. So that's why we're here. We've got to keep an eye on it and be ready when things start to pop. Great post here from Ben Knoll. Thought I'd show you this. And he's right. Remarkable satellite imagery this Monday. I posted or tagged this earlier today, but whatever. Monday afternoon now. It's still there. Wildfire smoke from Canada up here streaming south and then eventually eastward. Look at that. I mean, that's ridiculous. Good grief. And then you've got the African dust, the Saharan dust out here. The front draped in between. And as Ben said in his post, only a few hundred miles separate the two phenomena. Pretty cool to see. We've got these great satellites up there that can show us this. I think that's pretty cool. All right, so let's back the old GFS up here and see what we might see in the future. No, I don't think we're going to have some hurricane coming up out of the Caribbean in a week or so, like the GFS operational and even its ensembles have been trying to show. We talked about that yesterday. That could still happen further out in time. Of course it could, because we don't know the future. And I know that sounds sort of like a snarky way of putting it, but yeah, it's hurricane season, and yes, beyond day 10, you never know. Something might try to come together uh, because of the Central American gyre. There's a little bit of a weak signal for it around here coming up, but more uh, of immediate, not even real concern, unless you have outdoor activities planned for later in the week. This is the area we're going to really be watching in the coming days from all of this scattered energy sitting out here, again, of non tropical origins and what that means is we don't have a big tropical wave coming in that's itself full of heat and energy and moisture that is the source of what we're going to be watching. This is more spread out frontal energy that might try to bundle that energy and come together and give us something towards the weekend. So let's see if we see it on the GFS a little bit. It's still stretched out though. I mean look at that. That's your vorticity signature pulled apart like, you know, dough or whatever, play-doh, whatever, taffy, whatever. It's not bundled. That's bundled more, but it's still huge, and that's just a mid to upper level piece of energy, but that's not much more than a disturbance, and, and certainly that could bring some inclement weather wherever the clouds and showers and thunderstorms are underneath that vorticity, uh, but that in and of itself is not anything to worry about. The GFS doesn't do much. Maybe by Friday, a little weak area right up here off the Carolina coast. We'll have to see about that. The Euro, though, actually, this is the East Pack. I was trying to get things prepped. There we go. The Euro, though, let's go back to the beginning. This is the 6Z run. It's a little bit more enthusiastic with something to develop there uh, near the low country of South Carolina. I'll point you where to look uh, right in there. That's what we're going to be watching for. And notice how it does try to curl up. And you can even see the little banding with it. I don't know. That could be interesting and not necessarily in a good way. You know, we're not talking about big impacts, but you got weekend plans coming up, boating interest out there along the Carolina coast. This will wreck that. Definitely showers, thunderstorms, some gusty winds. So again, not everything. You know, the internet and social media is such a wonderful haven for great info, great conversations with people. You know, it's got a great side. But the other side is everything seems to have to be the worst possible scenario, make you the angriest, make you the most anxious to get you to pay attention. And I just, I don't live in that world or I would already be dead. Believe me, the anxiety would just be overwhelming. So we're not looking just for the Cat 5 hurricane that's going to make a great thumbnail. This is impactful. It will be impactful if it comes to pass even remotely close to this. 
You've got showers, thunderstorms, gusty winds. You've got boaters out there. Again, weekend plans coming up. People want to know about that, too. So it's just very important. That messaging has not changed over the almost 30 years that I've been doing public awareness stuff. Even a disturbance like that is definitely worth talking about. And you know, not hype it up any more than it needs to be, but it still impacts. All right? So we'll keep an eye on that over the coming days and see what becomes of it. Now, tonight, uh, you guys obviously know, if you've been watching me for the last few years at least, I work with the great folks up at Fox Weather, and we're so glad to have Brian Norcross with us as well. And tonight, on whatever device you have, that's the beauty of it, not many people are still sitting around watching TV like in the old days when it was sitting up on a wooden cabinet or something and in the entertainment center and you pop it on channel 38 or whatever the case may be. We're all carrying around TV in our hand with our smartphone, right? Whether it's Android or iPhone or Apple, whatever. You get the point. It's everywhere you want it to be. And tonight, Brian Norcross will be taking your questions. I love what they did with that. Hurricane HQ and A. Genius there. Hurricane HQ, that's Fox's branded way of talking about their awesome hurricane coverage. And then the Q&A, come on, that's pretty clever, you got to admit. But do tune in tonight. I'm going to be watching myself. Uh, I don't think I have any questions for him, and if I do, I'll just text him separately. But anyway, do tune in if you get a chance. It'll be a really great opportunity uh, to learn from one of the greatest that we have ever seen. And we're very lucky, like I said, to have him with us at Fox Weather. All right, moving on along real quick. Over the next few weeks and months, I'm going to be talking more and more. There's the official logo for it. Mr. Tim Melman helped me develop all of this. The background, by the way, is slightly AI generated from a real picture. Long story short, AI could be helpful when you need it in a pinch. I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. I took a picture of one of our cams on a pole and said, make it look more like that. Whatever. I don't remember what the prompt was, but... Mr. Melman, one of our back-end people, helped me to, to develop the 20 years of doing it live part. And there we go. Because, yes, it is coming up. This is hard to believe. The same year that YouTube started, 2005, and some of you watching this video were not even born yet. I get it. We were doing live video that same year on the Internet remotely. I'm not talking about streaming from your office or whatever through a T1 line. I'm talking about from the vehicle using the terrestrial network. Back in the day, we were using Sprint. Remember them? Now it's T-Mobile. Anyway, we're going to talk about it. Over the coming weeks and months, I'm going to have some guests come on from time to time, probably do some stuff live, because we began what we now know of as live weather coverage from vehicles, from remote camera boxes, certainly have pioneered that. And I want to walk you through that history, because it is remarkable. And I'll talk also about what we're going to do with it as we continue to go forward for maybe the next 20 years. I wouldn't mind doing that. I'm still young. I can do it. But yeah, we'll, we'll look back at 20 years of doing it live like nobody else has. It's, it's, it's a hell of a story. It really is. And I can't wait to uh, you know, let you in on it. Some of the, the, the beginnings of it, you'll see. All right, let's move on. The other thing I've been doing a long time, took that picture last night, by the way, uh, in my hallway right out here because I wanted to give a sense of scale. Very proud of the paper map. I know, hey, I just showed you our interactive map, but a lot of people still like to plot with a Sharpie or whatever on a paper map. So if you want one, I got them available. It even has the little logo down there of the 20 years of doing it live. I signed the back of it. I put a big old thank you on there for you because I mean it. It's a great way to keep this art form going. I designed that map myself many, many years ago. And uh, it's just cool, right? It's a big poster. Put it up in your office or whatever, and people will definitely notice as you're tracking the hurricanes this year, which you know are coming. And I've made it easier. Finally, it was a little difficult recently. I was like, yeah, just go to this or that. There's a link right here. You click on it, and it'll take you to the page where you can order through PayPal or Venmo or whatever. I'll put that link in today's description of the video. I'm just everywhere. Look at this. That's too much mark going on there. I'm there, I'm there, and I'm right here. Let's get out of this page and go back to the home page there, the title screen, so that I can say my goodbyes and let you go about your Monday knowing what's up out there. All right? At least you'll be informed 
after listening and watching to today's video. All right? So I think that's about it. I'll be back tomorrow, the rest of the week, of course, staying on top of all of this for you. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I am Mark Suddeth, everywhere. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.